Hi guys and welcome back to Hearthstone Champions League. My name is Nimsh and I'm here with Aqua Blood to tell you the story of those four remaining players. Aqua, how are you doing, man? Fantastic, man. We got some great games coming up for you guys. Oskaka Ecop first, followed by Tyson Pavel. Both all these players are gonna be want to make a mark in this tournament. It is a major, it has ten thousand dollars on the line, and I'm sure each player wants to get this tournament under their belt and on their C V. Absolutely. We started very strong with a amazing lineup but now we are down to four oskaka ecop then tice and pavel and th those matches right now the oskaka versus ecop it's about the money as well it's not only about winning the whole tournament but the loser has a chance to not get anything and the winner has uh, at least 3500 gu guaranteed and no fourth place is not getting any money today so all these players are going to be playing hard at least to get some cash and get an investment out of their time they've put into this tournament. And starting off, we have Oskaka playing the Zulok and Ecop playing the Patron Warrior. And these guys are playing quite similar lineups, quite aggressive lineups. Whereas on the flip side, Pavel and Tice are playing more control oriented lineups. So this should be uh, quite a, a dynamic matchup to start off with. Yeah, I agree. It will be funny in a contrast where I assume those guys will finish quite fast, uh, regardless of the score, is it a 3-2 or a 3-0, and then Tice versus Pavel uh, might be a bit longer. I'm actually happy that Pavel changed his Reno Lock to Zoo, uh, because if we would see another Reno Lock versus Reno Lock, well, that would take a while. Yep, kind of like the old Control Warrior. Yeah. Uh, this is Control Warrior. Okay, so um, the Zoo versus Patreon, I believe this is a good matchup for Patreon, but the Zoo has a good start here, and Ecop only has one whirlwind defect and, and, um, and an unstable goal. But there Although, is... yes. finding that whirlwind is a big deal. Now, Grim Patron whirlwind in a rage on turn six. So, uh, like you said, it's a good matchup for Ecop, and he uh, will be able to leverage the board heavily with those Grim Patrons and interact well with those minions. Absolutely. All right, there is there is Gormok as well. I, I really like this build of Gormok, and this is the, the brand bronze beer instead of the Chinese version of the zoo, uh, which runs Leroy Sea Giants and um, and Handsome Meccano. But uh, I think this this version is a bit more stable and a, a bit more board centric as well. Don't you just love it when you drop Bran and then you drop uh, Gormok and you just do eight damage to face? Oh man, doesn't that feel great? <laughs> that does feel great. It does feel great, especially because I think Gormok is similar to Sea Giant, where you really need those minions on the board, like around four minions, which is not usually a problem for Zoo, especially if you have cards like Haunted Creeper. And then you can have, instead of just slamming a big guy on, on the board, you have this flexibility of, of deciding if you want to go for face or if you want to remove a minion, and you still end up with a 4-4 body on board. Yeah, the 4-4 body alone is not too bad for its cost, so even if you don't get its battle cry, you can still play it for tempo as a 4-4. But, you know, Oskak is close to... Uh getting those minions, but the only problem is Unstable Ghoul. If that does pop open, it'll kind of ruin his day. Uh, what do you f <laughs> I guess it's in his best interest to leave this ghoul alive at the moment, at least until he can find Gormok, uh, a Gormok play. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so ghoul is kind of annoying for now. And uh, on Ecop's side, he can just wait. He can even kill one of the spiders just in case. Uh, because he is uh, seeing this kind of a board, you know Oskaka is planning something. Something maybe like Defender of Argus to protect the spiders and then kill the kill the ghoul. Um, Implosion is not doing much. Yeah, not the greatest card to pick up when you're fighting an unstable ghoul. Uh, if he can, he could clear unstable ghoul first. Uh, which death rattle was played first? I can't quite remember. Here. Unstable yeah. Ghoul, Unstable Ghoul was played first. Um, so the spiders will survive, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what do so you we... think about Juggler into Dark Peddler and try to snipe the Ghoul? Yeah, I think he is going for the, that exact play here. Oh, we'll pop the Ghoul open first. Okay, so he's going to protect the health of his Knife Juggler. Doesn't want that Armorsmith clearing it up. And now he's dropped uh, quite a threatening board. And uh, he's almost close to Gormark in. And if that knife juggler does stick around, uh, the implosion will be devastating as well. Taking Abusive as well to be able to enable Gormok and have a good clear on something else. Uh, Power Overwhelming was tempting because that's a really nice burst. But uh, if you assume this armor smith is killing one of your minions, you end up with three. You will be able to Abusive one. Uh, that will be the fourth minion and then slam Gormok as the fifth minion on board. So what you do here is 
Ecarb. I guess you can just wait because the next turn you've got that really impactful moment. You uh, run the armor smith into the knife juggler, guarantee the kill on it. So as long as nothing too huge comes down, uh, Ecarb will clear most of this board. Uh, what do you think Oskaka should do? Does that does that attack tell you enough information that patrons coming next turn? Yeah, I think it uh, it tells you a lot. Uh, and on five, you normally do not explode with patrons. There was no weapon, so I w if I would be Oskaka, I would guess there is Enrage and, and Whirlwind. At least at least those three cards, patron, Whirlwind, Enrage, and knowing that, well, Gormok st st still deals some damage, but you you really cannot protect the rest of your board because you don't have Defender of Argus. So um, just uh, trying to. But, Oh man, this is so tough. Like on one hand, Gormok is one of the great tools to deal with those patrons. So maybe you would try to set up a board to kill the patrons where they show up. Like if there are f if there is four of them. Yeah, he's he's going for that exactly. He wants to have those minions to be able to counter patrons if there is a big patron turn. And there's only one whirlwind effect, so the big game hunter will stick around. The egg won't be popped but he may be able to use it with the Abusive Sergeant. He's got Power of Overwhelming as well, and Implosion, so he can use all those three cards next turn, so he'll have ways to deal with these patrons uh, going into the next turn. So I think Oskaka is still pretty comfortable. Well, we are going to see six patrons, and um, two of them will be on one health. So it's not the best still, but Oskaka has ways to um, not die, to, to reduce the patrons a bit. And then Ecob is actually lacking a play on turn 7, he only will have Execute. Uh, so with the 6 patrons, let's see, what, what can Oskaka do? Power Overwhelming on an Egg, that clears one free free. Then uh, one free free can be killed with a 4-1. Mm, he can Abusive, can he still Gormok? Yeah, so he can still Gormok. I think it's it's alright overall. Like he is able to kill a lot of those patrons here. He's c killing the key ones as well. Like the five ones do pose a threat, uh, but ultimately they can't spawn any more patrons. So they're just five one bodies now. They're just magma rages. So if he can clear the ones with health uh, quite efficiently, which he can with the resources in his hand, uh, things are not looking too bad. It's uh, still a, a winnable match for him. Absolutely, and he's getting a four four in the process. Uh, he's still having actually double 4 force here uh, and a 2 1 that's contesting one of the 5 1s. So if Ecop, Ecop can't really go for face, Armorsmith is not doing much. So he might just need to trade into those 4 force, reduce the board. But uh, Oskaka is the one with the draw with the life tap, and uh, Ecop will be kind of top decking here. Yeah, he puts himself behind having to trade in that situation. Oskaka can play two minions per turn, even off top decking. Uh, he can play Ink Gang Boss now, maybe tap for another two drop, and uh, just take the initiative on board. And like you said, Ecop will be in top deck mode, and then he has to find answers to uh, Oskaka. Uh, Abusive Sergeant was a great pick up there, clear up that Armor Smith. Uh, the Armor Smith is great for taking out imps. And look at that top deck, it's such a whiff, so Grom needs to come down now and just try and put some leverage here. Yeah, and with Grom, Oskaka can actually re remove Grom easily, he can even use Leroy. And uh, by the way, that's actually a Leroy in the um, Gormog Zoo. So, interesting addition as well, like this, this extra burst. Suddenly, people realize that Leroy is a good card in the Zoo deck. Who would ever thought, right? Always in Hunter, always in Rogue. But now it's in Zoo. I remember a guy playing Leroy in the NVIDIA Grand Finals in his Zoo deck, and I think he actually won that tournament with the Leroy uh, inclusion, because no one expected it. But now everyone's kind of expecting it more since the America's uh, preliminaries have become very popular. And like you said, such an easy clear. Grom goes down, double execute, sit in the Ecop's hand. He's going to have to find a good draw here. Battle Rage. Mm, it's going to draw him a card, but uh, Shred is not too bad. It's a minion, at least, and it sticks to the board. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But still, um, Oskaka did stop the Patron Outburst. Uh, he stopped the Grom, and now what can Ecop have? He, he has one more Battle Rage to maybe f um, draw a couple more cards, but uh, he did use that one. He has Dr. Boom still, and there is a Sea Giant. So, wow, this is an interesting deck. Like, he's still playing Gormok with the Sea Giant, so it is, in fact, maybe he is not playing Enhanced Mechano. He's just playing Gormok instead. I think you could run both, potentially. I mean, Gormok does... Um, he needs the same requirement as Sea Giant, lots of minions, so they kind of work well together. 
Uh, we I don't know if we saw an enhanced summer cano from Osakaki yesterday. Maybe he doesn't like that inclusion. But yeah, I, I'm surprised. I'd be surprised if we see a Doom Guard at all because these variations of Zoo don't generally run Doom Guard. We did see it from someone. Was it Osakaki with uh, C Giant attacking twice? I think it must have been Osakaki. Yeah. And I think Ecop's running the more traditional uh, Zoo Lock, if I remember rightly. Yeah, with Bran. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we we've, we've seen a lot of Zoo because Pavel is also running a Zoo deck. So uh, that was a bit confusing, but um, a good knife not hitting the um, Acolyte of Pain. Acolyte of Pain. Although this Acolyte of Pain might get some draws uh, if he doesn't get cleared. Oh well, actually, Knife Jugs is probably just going to take care of it, to be honest. Absolutely. And there is still a Sea Giant opportunity, and uh, Oskaga can clear this board, and then Sea Giant might be troublesome for Ecop to deal with, especially with no minions, no activators. He will need to draw into something. And uh, Activator, most of the mo most of the time, Activator will not be the card he wants. Like, he wants Dr. Boom, right, for example, to be able to fi start fighting back for the board. If he draws something like a Taskmaster, or, uh, well, it's uh, it's actually a Patron deck, so something like a Whirlwind or um, Inner Rage, it will not... Well, actually, Whirlwind will be amazing here. <laughs> the issue Ecop has is how does he win this game? I mean, how does he ever clear the board and generate his own amount of threat, especially with a Sea Giant coming down as well? So, uh, Ecop draws a Death Spite. That is one of the activators, but look how much damage you're going to tank to face. You might have to execute the Knife Juggler here just to slow things down a little bit. I think that's not bad. He might kill the Direwolf Alpha as well. So, like, kill Direwolf Alpha with a weapon attack and then uh, even play the Frauding Berserker and execute the Knife Juggler, as you mentioned. So that he does, uh, the, the Sea Giant will attack into Frauding. And uh, if he gets something like a Patron, he might have a chance to, to do a bit more um, things. But he, he decides that free damage is not that much from the Knife Juggler. And now the Argus can come down on the Knife Juggler. And it puts him out of range of just the Death Spide, so will in effect. So he'll have to tank another minion uh, with his weapon. He can potentially clear the Giant then with the execute, but so much damage going to face. Like you said, a, a patron, picking up a patron next turn might be enough to kind of get things rolling, but uh, so far Oskaka is just in so much control in this game. Yeah, absolutely. Oskaka is the one dictating the tempo and, and drawing cards as well. If Vika gets Dr. Boom, then maybe, uh, because uh, he is almost clearing this board next turn with the execute landing on that Sea Giant. I even if uh, Defender Vargas lands on the Knife Juggler here, then he will just attack into the Knife Juggler and kill it. If it doesn't, then he attacks into one of the Imps and kills the Knife Juggler anyway. Mm -hmm. So, um, Dr. Boom might be really nice to get back if he draws into it. If he doesn't, then uh, Patron is a possibility as well. He'll be able to play Patron, Frauding Berserker after, maybe, as, as a 2-4, to have some minions on board. Oh, interesting. So he's forcing that weapon to go nine into the sea giant he's playing around the execute he knows that this might be the only activator ecop has for an execute he can't tank a sea giant now and uh that was really smart play from Oskaka, that actually. was super smart that was super smart not trying to protect the sea giant through taunting other minions but basically forcing ecop to lose right here right now there is no way he's going to execute this i was really smart i did not expect that from Oskaka. very well played from him there Knowing that Ecop, once he's taken all that damage, his only way to get that whirlwind effect off was, would be equipping another weapon or tanking nine damage to face, which he couldn't do. So well played from Oskaka. I'm I'm amazed. Like this is the the word. Like it it seems obvious after he does that, but it's it is such a world champion level of play. Even Ecop was like he looked at it and he was like, this is super smart because it, I I wasn't even thinking about it, and we we haven't discussed that. But that was just a brilliant move and a brilliant read where your opponent sits on those on those two cards for the longest time and you know that, hey, he was not going to execute the, the Knife Juggler, right? So you do make a read that he has those conditional cards that he just couldn't play before. He is just seeking the Activator. So that was a really nice play. I know Oskak has shown these next level plays before in the past and during the World Championship last uh, year, so... 
It's no, uh, no surprise to see something like that. And like you said, if you look at it, it looks really simple once it's happened. But the thought process Oskaka went through to get to that point where he thought, actually, maybe Ecop doesn't have any activators other than Despite. Taunt up a sea giant, he's going to have to kill himself. So, you know, he's just thinking about the game and Ecop's hand and what Ecop can do on a whole other kind of spectrum. And that's what makes him a world champion. It's also such a counterintuitive play to make. Because you want to protect it, so you don't want to give it sound so that someone can attack into it. But in a sense, it really worked. But now we're going to see Azul versus Paladin. So, um, well, the previous one seemed to be a good matchup for Ika, but he lost it. And now it seems to be a good matchup for Ika again. Yeah, that's true. He's playing the most traditional, uh, the more traditional style of Zoo with that Doom Guard. Like you said, the Bran, the Dark Iron Dwarf, Oskaka is rocking. The kind of new school Chinese uh, zoo, which has been adopted by the American players. But yeah, this could uh, be a pretty good matchup for Ecop. Uh, no consecration for Oskaka just yet. Very key card in fighting for the board here. But Ecop already has quite a strong lead. He can coin straight into Imgang Boss if he wants to play something quite sticky. Or he can go into Knife Juggler if he wants to put more of a threat down. But that runs into Cog Hammer, so. Ink Gang Boss is probably the safest mini you can play at this point. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I just want to to underline the fact that he has that uh, free mana to drop, or like two mana. Um, well, basically free mana to drop on turn two, and then follow up with Bran, Dark Iron Dwarf, and then Knife Juggler into something. So he has a really good opening to fight what Paladin can uh, throw at him. Uh, but on the other hand, Oskaka also has um, that shielded mini bot with a secret Pilot to Treader into Lothab. If he picks up something like Mistress Challenger. That he might have a fair fight versus Hiccup. Yeah, I mean, he still has to deal with a Bran Bronzebeard as well. Uh, the double battle cry on the Argus or the Dark Iron Dwarf might uh, give a nice swing to Ecop again in his favor. Uh, I mean, even if he plays the Shredder now, he can clear the Imp Gam boss, but he can't clear the two Imps. So a big defender of Argus can come down unless he goes for the Muster this turn or the Blessing of Kings to deal with that Bran. I think Oskaka needs to analyze how much of an impact Bran can have next turn. I think uh, going for Master into Bran makes a lot of sense. You're generating a big board and you're dealing with one of the biggest threats. If, if there is Defender of Argus just buffing it to 4-6, it's really tough. All right, so he goes for Blessing of Kings to not floating mana, but he knows that Bran Bronze is the biggest threat here. And Dark Iron Dwarf can come down and clear up this shielded mini bot. But if Bran had stuck around, uh, it would have been a devastating turn for Oskaka. So he, he identified that uh, Bran was a big threat, took him out, but lost his kind of Blessing of Kings and his mini bot at the same time. But with a low feb to follow up, that might be his next play. Or he could go for a muster and generate a lot of 1-1s just to try and get some leverage on the board with Building a, a bigger board than just dropping a big 5-5, five five, which can be taken out by these two uh, minions on board already. Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, it's a problem if a Glothab just gets killed, and it's not like you're blocking many spells from Zoo anyway. Zoo mostly has, uh, has the minions. And um, Master for Battle makes a lot of sense. Uh, maybe Shredder with Avenge as well, um, because then it, Avenge will not proc, but uh, there's always a threat of redemption or some other secret which might lock the attack, but uh, he decides to go for Lothab. So he, maybe he's hoping Ecop just slams his board into this, doesn't have like double abusive or something like that, and uh, maybe he can rebuild his board from there, but Ecop just drops a Doomguard, discards it of a Doomguard, but keeps his Argus. Argus might play a big role, and now Ecop's in the driver's seat with a tremendous amount of power on board, and Oskaka top decks a, a very good card wow. to deal with some <laughs> of these minions. <laughs> Yeah, the Mystery Challenger was absolutely needed here. Consecration wouldn't wouldn't cut it, um, but he goes for Master instead. A, a single Mystery Challenger can be answered pretty easily, especially with the the five to Doom, Doomguard just being buffed, um, with um, something and an Imp attack maybe. So he knows that the, the Mystery Challenger wouldn't be enough here. He wants to generate enough of a board to be able to use Avengers uh, that he's getting, the Avengers that he has right now, and the Avengers he's getting from Mystery Challenger in the future. I mean, this juggler might proc an Avenge now. Uh, yep, so an Avenge is going to go off. So unless he cop just clears all this board, his challenger will become much more powerful next turn if he has some minions left, because then he can s spread the power across the board with Avenge with some good luck. So I think that's why Oskaka went for that. But 
Ecop just goes on the offensive here, just smashing him in the face and forcing Oskaka to have an answer. Yeah, there was no great way to trade into those minions. So um, he is trying to, to get that advantage he, he got on board as, as fast as possible. Uh, there is the Mistress Challenger for Oskaka and he got Tyrion on turn 8. So it is, uh, he still has a chance to survive here, especially... Um, how much damage is it? The juggler can die, and then there's six plus uh, three. All right, so on the on the back of the Tyrion, maybe Ostaka will still survive. So this is a really close game at the moment. Implosion gets picked up from the life tap. Argus uh, is another way to create defense and power on the board. Uh, but you can also go for an implosion to create more minions, throw some knives around. But Fizzy's going to proc a, kind of open up the Christmas tree, get all the presents open, and uh, Redemption, Avenge. Maybe he doesn't run uh, a Redemption. Maybe that's competitive. Oh, we've seen competitive spirit, actually. So yeah, this yeah, would yeah, be Redemption. So no Repentance in this deck. Uh, so we got eight damage there. He can land an extra two damage with the Defender of Argus. Goes for the Implosion, so it looks like he might just go for the Clear on the Challenger. What do you think about that? Is this a, an opportunity you should take to be aggressive with all this health? I, I think it makes sense, like, if you expect... Uh, he misses, but if you expect Tyrion to come uh, as a zoo... Like, as a zoo, most of the time you should take an opportunity of, of trading, if possible. But because he missed, uh, he didn't have that chance. Also, um, if you would get lucky with the juggles, maybe there was a, a lethal opportunity. Was there? 8 damage? It was, okay, so no lethal opportunity, but... Just having more more minions on the board is nice. Uh, Tyrion, it's gonna be a bit of a brick wall here for Ecop unless he finds a silence. Although, uh, Oskaka does deal with this board quite efficiently. Uh, he doesn't find a silence. Yeah, he still has a chance with Dark Peddler to maybe find the Soulfire, but uh, the situation turned more or less. Uh, he can deal with the Divine Shield with the single Imp, but then Lothab. Is, uh, is just dying, and the 9-1 challenger might have only one point of health, but he still attacks for 9. He's alive and kicking, and he can still swing to face for 9. Tyrion can deal with the Voidwalker, or the Lothar. Well, you'll have to deal with the Voidwalker if he plays it, the Tyrion, and then I can just smoke for 9 and face, and then e needs just to find another way to deal with Tyrion. You might find, say, an abusive, maybe use the Argus to clear the Tyrion, but then the Ashbringer goes into Oskaka's weapon slot, and that's 15 damage over three turns, so this is a perfect opportunity for Oskaka to come back in this game. Absolutely, he can't even play the Flame Imp here, because he will go down to 20, and then he's dead to Blessing of Kings top deck. <laughs> this is such an interesting oh, game. Oh, Ragnaros! Oh, wow. Okay, I absolutely forgot about this card. Does it set up lethal in some weird way? Um, no, I don't think it does. Not necessarily, but still, if you go uh, with the 9-1 into the 5-5, with the 6-6 six, six stunned into the 1-3, and play Ragnaros, you can deal 9 damage to eke up this turn, and then he just... Um, he is in a bind, and I, I like that. Oh, he's I going for Mistress Challenger. Is, is there a second Noble Sacrifice? Because I'm, I was curious if he even has it. Noble Sacrifice would be perfect. Uh... He knows there's a Noble Sacrifice left, I think Challenger is the better play because it protects your Tyrion. But if there was noble, no Noble Sack, I would have just slammed Rag at that point. And uh, yeah, we'll see if it is a Noble Sack. I assume it is. Oskaka, I think, would have went for the Rag if he didn't have a Noble Sack left. I think there is no secret, right? Or is there a secret? I can see something glowing Something's above glowing. Okay. the top of Ufa's, like, top of his hair. That but might, I'm not that sure. might be his hair, actually. He's using a really good uh, Azeroth in product. All right, there's another <laughs> sacrifice. Oh, it's because man. he's worth it, right, Ariel? Because he's is it L'Oreal? Because he's worth it. Yes, yes, that's it. You're right. Ecop cannot believe he actually lost this game. He's still trying to defend uh, himself, but uh, it should be enough to go through uh, because of Ragnaros specifically. But on the other hand, there is like there are the spiders. So is that enough? I think it is. It is enough, yeah. Just attack with the 6-6 six, six and the 6-5, and then you have 11. So Ecop is like, whoops, I guess that's it. Can Kaka find lethal on this lethal board? <laughs> even... And there's Keeper of Alderman as yeah. well. Let's top it off. Yep. And that's it. Ecop loses this game. A good matchup once again, and he falls to uh, Oskaka. Clutching out this game on free health. I mean, man.
That was so close. Things were looking so good for Ecop, but once that Challenger came down, and then the Tyrion came down after, it was so tough for Ecop to come back. Without, like you said, finding a Peddler, finding that Soulfire. So a 2 0 lead for Oskaka so far. Yeah, it's actually amazing. Like, both games, he won versus Ecop, were really close. And uh, then, like, the game where Ecop had six patrons, right? Oskaka being able to make that read first and actually playing Big Game Hunter and Rubinek to be able to clear those patrons and put himself in a good situation, in a good position. And then this game where Ikab was really close to just winning the game and uh, Askaka just on the on the back of a 9-1. If he would, I think if Ikab would not go for Implosion but just slammed Lothab then, like earlier, he might have a way to deal with the situation where he would just Implosion the 9-1 or like 9-whatever that was and, and kill it. But the fact that he, he I, I think he felt blood in a way, like he wanted to have more singular minions and Lothar might have been a bit better there. Yeah, potentially. It was a it was a tough spot for Ecop. I mean, I don't think it was kind of black and white what he had to do in that situation. Yeah, exactly, exactly. There was especially, a lot of ways it could have went. Exactly, especially because he had uh, a knife juggler, so that situation promised a bit more damage from the knife juggler itself. To, to push the board even further and uh, and deal that damage with Implosion. Um, but now we are with the Druid versus Patron. What do you think about that matchup? Well, a lot of Patron players probably feel it's a little bit in their favor, uh, but Druids definitely don't struggle. It uh, very much depends on that kind of explosive Patron turn on, say, 5 or 6, and Druid can't deal with it. But we're talking about Druid here, the most probably the most consistent deck in Hearthstone right now. And they can just snag wins from anywhere. Yeah, and I think Oskaka has a really nice draw as well. He is able to play the Shade on turn two, turn 2 with the coin, and then on turn 3 he will be able to play Druid with the Claw. He is missing turn 4 for now, but still, um, versus Patron, you want to have those minions on board. So even having those small 1-1s one in the beginning and, and be able to chip armor is, is quite all right for him. Um, on the other hand, Ecop, he has um, Frothing Berserker on turn 3, but other than that, he is missing cards, and he doesn't have Enrage yet. Doesn't have a weapon as well, despite yeah. something he wants to hold on to. So yeah, Frothing comes down, but Oskaka now has Innovate Druid of the Claw if he chooses, and then uh, turn four's a little bit more awkward, but he might find something. He still has a Wrath as well, ready for those patrons. He might even charge here, actually, like just uh, get the Cat Druid and uh, charge into the 2-4. Two 4-2 four. Four two is... Not that easy to remove for Patreon, and on turn 4 you expect uh, Death Spite, so Death Spite would still have to go into the 4-2. Um, yeah, and that, that Wrath for turn 4 is actually fine. Not even turn 4, like, if he if he uh, doesn't cast Wrath on turn 4, if there is no good target, he might just keep it as another tool to remove Patrons. I mean, another thing you could do here is Wrath the Froven, use uh, one of the 1-1s one to clear it up. But I think I prefer getting a minion on board, especially a Druid of the Claw. And like you said, if he charges it, he deals with the Frothing Berserker, keeps a 4-2 on the board, which then Ecop has to answer with probably a weapon or maybe a slam, but he doesn't get the draw off the slam. So it looks like Oskak is going to uh, take it easy, just go for the kind of clean removal there with the Wrath and the 1-1 one -one, and let Ecop kind of see what Ecop does before he starts investing Druid of the Claws. Absolutely. Ecop doesn't pick up a, a, a weapon. A Death Spike hero would be quite nice. Or even something like um, Fire War Axe, just to be able to kill the 1-1 one -one and uh, play the, the Corsair. He does set up a little taunt, so he does have something that will stop that 1-1 one -one chipping away at him. Uh, swipe gets picked up by Oskaka, so that's just a clean kill on that Dread Corsair, if he, if he wants it. But what else could you potentially do? You could float one mana off an Innovate and do a Druid of the Claw. But then turn 5, he has the potential to Innovate Ancient of Law and draw two more cards. Uh, what would you prefer here? I, I'm not against Swipe, because Swipe is mostly useless uh, against patrons. Uh, but sometimes you can find spots to use it. So it, it's a hard call. Um, I would not hate Innovating Druid of the Claw in the taunt form as well. Just to, to block the attack and then follow up with Druid of the Claw, then turn 6. Um, Maybe find a way to trade your minions and use the swipe, but swipe here is absolutely fine. And just attack yeah, just, with the 1-1. One, one. Yeah, a clean way to deal with it. Like you said, swipe can be useful, but it can also be quite clunky in this matchup. And it was just kind of a, a, a clean answer to that minion. And now an armor smith comes down with an armor up. Very slow turn for Ecop there. 
And Oskakuna has the opportunity to innovate into Ancient of Law if he wants to draw those cards, or adopt the boom if he picked it up. So uh, a lot of threatening plays can come from Oskaka this turn. A 4-6 taunt, a 5-5 five five that draws cards. He has a lot of options available to him. Absolutely. Um, I think Ancient of Lore is quite uh, tempting here because you want to draw the, the combo parts. Innervate will be important if you want to combo uh, earlier, maybe. And uh, Oskaka is in a great shape this game, just uh, being able to, to pressure Ecop. Uh, all right, so he decides for the cat here. So he values the, the innervate more to be able to maybe just uh, savage her at some point, at a key point. Eco finally gets the death bite after all those years. <laughs> uh, it's a good time for it to show up, though. He can deal with that cat, and then the whirlwind effect will be able, allow him to execute the shade. Uh, but Dr. Boom is uh, going to be available next turn, so... If he does want to clear that shade, he won't be able to uh, play Dr. Boom as well. So, again, things are not looking uh, too great for Ecop as far as kind of consistency goes with his plays. He's had to float mana, he's had to just kind of play stuff he's finding. Like, he just had to play an armor smith and armor up. And Oskaka on the other side has so many options, he can just do what he wants. Oh, I just fancy a shredder right now. Oh, I'm yeah. just innovate an ancient of law. I want to draw cards. There's so many things Oskaka could do where Ecop is just so limited to kind of one line of play because his hand is not allowing him to do anything. And it's so interesting that Druid has so many choices. Like, normally Druid just slams the, the, the best card in hand and that's it. And now Oskaka can decide what does he want to do. Uh, playing more minions, does he want play, uh, to play more minions, especially because Ecop is getting lower and lower? Like, he will attack for 7 this turn at least, uh, which will put Ecop at 15. So he might even innervate a minion. Alright, he decides to keep the innervate for a possible combo. Because if he gets Savage Roar, Savage Roar with Druid of the Claw in hand will be a lot of damage if any minions um, survive. And now Ecop's at that magic number, 14. Yeah, uh, already. <laughs> So that's a number you never want to be at when you're playing against Druid. And now he has to tank another 4 damage uh, with clearing the Shredder. He doesn't clear all of it though, uh, unless uh, the 1-1 one, one drops out. Nope. So that 3-1 is going to stick around. He does get the Execute. And this is a turn where Ecop uh, finally does something, makes some impact on the board. But Oskaka may have answers. He may find the things he needs to deal with. Oh, this. he has answers already. Like, um, that free one was amazing for Oskaka because now he can answer all the... Well, not all the patrons, but the, all, all the patrons that matter. So he can run the free one into the free free. He can kill the free two with the two four and run the, the four four into one of the free threes. Um, and he's also really close to getting lethal here. So how much damage is it? Uh, he is, is he one damage off or something? Seven... Yeah, I think he's one damage off, so really close. The difference was one damage, and this patron board is dispatched fairly easily. Ecop does have a Dr. Boom to follow up, but you must be <laughs> feeling pretty bad at this point. Ten health against the Druid. Uh, he's just dealt with one of your win conditions uh, fairly easily. And yeah, and turn nine is closer and closer. A ten health. What are those two cards sitting in his hand? That Ancient of Law has been sitting there for quite some time. If he cops been keeping note of that, and Emperor was picked up recently, so he may be thinking, is that Force of Nature? Is he that close to finding that combo? Yeah. Is there anything else you can do other than slam Doctor Boom at this point? Um, if you go for Battle Rage, uh, is that good? So you will go, you will draw two cards, and then you run your free one into four one, and you have six more mana to play um, whatever you want, and you can. If you go for Aqua, I think that's not enough. So I, I do agree Dr. Boom is the best play. If, you, if you're behind, it's probably better to just slam Dr. Boom this turn. But Battle Rage was super tempting as well. If he had found a Whirlwind from his Battle Rage, he could have run the free one into the Keeper of the Grove, and then he could have played Patron and Whirlwinded and cleared the board. Uh, but that was banking on the Battle Rage, uh, finding that Whirlwind. And this is a savage draw, so Oskaka is very close to finishing this game. Draws two cards, another Ancient of Law, so we can dig even deeper next turn. Oh so, man, yeah. It's tough. Uh, what can Ecop do then? Just Acolyte of Pain and draw some cards, that might be um, the answer. Like, overall, can he generate a big patron board and still maybe take this game somehow? 
if the bombs are good, maybe still survive if Ostkaka just has the Savage Roar in hand and doesn't pick up Force of Nature. That will not be enough damage. Find an, another Armor Smith. I think Ecop still has a slight chance to not lose, but Oskaka is in an amazing position to win the game. Etop's just playing catch up. He's kind of just hoping that Oskaka doesn't find that combo. And anything Oskaka plays, he's going to have to clear. Yeah, that's true. Because so, Savager is uh, the biggest threat here if there are minions on board. Uh, good news for Ecop is that double Druid of the Claw is already gone, so nothing is charging at him. But double Force of Nature still sits in the deck. Oh, he's going for the slam here, so he does need a boom bot oh, wow. to hit this Ancient of Law. Can, can the boom bots actually do it? If they miss, that's it, right? Oh, there we go. All right. <laughs> oh, man, that was a close one. <laughs> oh, and there you go, straight off the top. Oh. Taking a 3 0 win over E Cup, going into your grand finals. Very well played from Oskak. We saw some really good heads up uh, decision making from him. And poor E Cup will be going into the third, fourth place match. Yeah, which... so E Cup still has one more match to play, um, which uh, I don't know when will it happen, but uh, maybe after the final, we'll see. But then Oskaka played really well, and uh, he just... Uh, maybe this game, it was a bit easier for him. It, it seemed like it, uh, because he just had an okay curve, he had good cards, and Ecop didn't have this punch, he didn't have the weapons. But uh, the first game and the second game was really masterfully played, especially that comeback on uh, a Paladin vs. Zoo. Oskaka must have felt, oh, I'm actually playing from ahead now. I'm not behind like I've been on the pr previous two se uh, series, so... Uh... You know, he had a, like you said, he had a tough game against Ecop before, and he found the wins, very clutch wins, very good decision making, and then that game he kind of just ran out of control, so it kind of like makes up for having such tough battles beforehand. Absolutely. All right, guys, um, now we will prepare the players for the second match, will be, which will be Pavel versus Thais, and the winner will go to the final, the loser will go to the third place match to face Ecop. But uh, just give us uh, some time, we'll prepare the players and we'll be back in a short while.